starts right now. He hit me broadside and spun my car around. And when he spun my car around, the other car clicked me. The shooting leads to a big crash outside of San Antonio Walmart. What police are saying this morning about the victims and the suspects who are still on the run. We're learning more details about the alleged suspect who attacked House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's husband. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. Heightened security concerns for lawmakers coming up. And the San Antonio Spurs are now 5-2 and two following another win last night. We're going to hear from the players about their performance so far this season. Outside with live cam this morning. Fantastic weekend. It's nice this morning. A bit on the cool side, but a ton of humidity. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to Halloween. It's Monday, the 31st. <laughs> Thanks for joining us and happy Halloween. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. Weather worked out and hopefully it will today as well. I'm hoping so too. It does kind of stink to have Halloween on a school night, but it mm -hmm. is what it is. And Mike Ostrich joins us now. How was your weekend, Mike? Uh, not bad. I mean, it was very, very beautiful this weekend. And, uh, you know, do you really... Uh, I don't know. You, did you find it humid this morning? Oh yeah, it's really slightly. Slightly. Yeah. I mean, just a little bit. Because, uh, but it's not going to be overly humid this afternoon. I mean, there'll be some out there. It's not like you're going to be sweating. I don't think in your Halloween costume. Um, the problem is there is a small chance for a couple little sprinkles as we go on into the evening hours. We're going to tell you more about that in just a second. First of all, we are starting off with a lot of high clouds out there, and we have temperatures that are coolish. 56 here in town, 46 Bernie stage, 40s in the uh, hill country. And yeah, these numbers are definitely up. Now they're below 60. So that's the kind of threshold when you really, really feel the humidity. But um, it, it has definitely come up somewhat. Obviously, the humidity out there now throughout the rest of the morning will drop down a couple of more degrees. Not a lot just because of the cloud cover and 53. Then later on this afternoon, 78 for a high temperature, mostly cloudy skies. Chance for a couple of sprinkles. If you go trick or treating early on, I think you have better chances not to see anything as far as any uh, sprinkles out there. But as far as I love the ghost going there in the background, um, there will be just one or two little light sprinkles out there. Chance for a shower or something like that. Most of us aren't going to be seeing anything. You might want to take an umbrella just to be on the uh, the safe side. We're going to have the forecast for the uh, first week of November in the upcoming weekend. That's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. San Antonio police say suspects are still on the run this morning following a shooting that led to a multi-car crash on the city's northeast side with two victims rushed to the hospital. It happened on Walsham and Parkcrest just outside of Walmart on Sunday. Police say a silver vehicle chased a stolen white Kia on Walsham Road and fired several rounds at that vehicle, striking two teens inside the white car. Now, during the incident, somebody in the white Kia slammed into two innocent bystanders inside their vehicle. So he spoke to one of the victims, and he tells us the entire incident happened within minutes. He hit me broadside and spun my car around. And when he spun my car around, the other car clicked me. Two of the shooting victims were rushed to University Hospital. One team was shot in the chest. At last check, he was in critical condition. The other team was shot in the shoulder. Detectives are working to get video footage from nearby businesses to identify the suspects and victim that got away. They say the shooter in the silver vehicle is still on the run. Authorities are expected to file charges today against the person accused of breaking in House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's home and attacking her husband. As ABC's Elizabeth Schulze reports, the incident is shedding light on violent threats against members of Congress. Heightened fears over lawmakers' safety as new details emerge about the alleged suspect who attacked House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's husband. Law enforcement sources tell ABC News 42-year-old David DePap had zip ties and duct tape in his bags early Friday when he broke into the Pelosi home. Sources say DePap shouted, where's Nancy? Another parallel to the January 6th Capitol attack. Where are you, Nancy? Authorities say Paul Pelosi called 911 when DePap broke in, leaving the line open. RP stated that there's a male in the home and that he's going to wait for his wife. RP stated that he doesn't know who the male is. Police arrived within two minutes. When they ordered DePap to drop his weapon, a hammer, that's when he allegedly struck Pelosi at least twice, fracturing his skull. This was not a random act. 
Authorities are now combing through the suspect's social media pages. Some allegedly show multiple false conspiracy theories about the 2020 election. What happened to uh, Paul Pelosi is despicable, it's unacceptable. The attack highlighting the growing hostility toward members of Congress, with threats at an all-time high, more than doubling since 2017. In an increasingly toxic political climate, a joint FBI Homeland Security bulletin sent to police nationwide now warns of a heightened threat by lone wolves ahead of the midterm elections. A politics where, where some in office or who aspire to office work to stir up division, to, to make folks as angry and as afraid of one another for their own advantage. House Speaker Pelosi says her family is heartbroken and traumatized by the life-threatening attack. The San Francisco DA is expected to file charges against the alleged suspect today, with a court hearing expected tomorrow. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. This morning in South Korea, shocked family members are collecting bodies and parents are still searching for their children. That's after at least 153 people were crushed to death when a crowd surged in an alleyway during Halloween festivities over the weekend. Two Americans are among the dead. South Korea's president has declared a period of national mourning and designated the affected area as a disaster zone after the Saturday night tragedy. The party are some still in their teens and many in Halloween costumes were ready enjoyed to enjoy bars, nightclubs, and restaurants. Instead, the street became filled with people crying for help while emergency workers desperately sought to free trapped bodies and perform CPR on those clinging to life. The House Select Committee has obtained emails that some believe may be a smoking gun in the Trump effort to overturn the election. The emails from Trump attorney John Eastman seem to indicate that the attorneys involved knew the details they submitted to courts were false. A federal judge had previously revealed what he called a fraudulent effort to hold off Congress from certifying the election. Eastman had tried several last-ditch attempts to keep the House Select Committee from seeing the emails. While the damage may be done, Eastman is now asking the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals to have the Select Committee return or destroy the emails. Happening today, the U.S. government is set to give Congress an unclassified update on UFOs just in time for Halloween. The official term now is unexplained aerial phenomena, nomina, or UAP. Last year, the first ever report listed a total of 144 incidents, only one of which could be explained. While U.S. officials say the most recent UAP incidents can be explained by a mix of weather balloons, airborne clutter, and foreign, foreign surveillance, others do remain a mystery. Time now, 437 and 55 degrees for now. You San Antonio Spurs taking care of business against the Minnesota Timberwolves again. What the players are saying about the win and the schedule going forward. How exciting. And looking outside with Trans Guide this Halloween morning, things are looking not so scary out there at I-35. Right now, things are moving. And outside with live cam. It do by chance you need to take an umbrella for trick-or-treating tonight. Just in case, Mike Ostrange will tell you coming up. With all the drama off the court surrounding the sudden waving of Josh Primo, the Spurs season continued last night with yet another game against the Timberwolves. Spurs trailed 6-0 early, but here they come. Doug McDermott off the bench and knocks down a three to tie the game at 16. Minutes later, he drains another from the corner. San Antonio rallies to lead after one. McDermott had 23 last night. Early second quarter, Blake Wesley banks a floater, but the rookie left the game a few minutes later after banging knees crossing the court. Another rookie steps up in the meantime. Malachi Branham drains the triple, and the San Antonio Spurs lead 57-47 at the break. In the second half, Keldon Johnson takes over with 14 ticks left in the third. Keldon drains the triple. Spurs up 85-70, heading into the fourth. After the Wolves made an eight-point game uh, late, made it an eight-point game, Keldon drains another three with the shot clock winding down. He had a team high 25 points and here is your final Spurs win 107-98. San Antonio is now 5 and 2 on the season. Everyone's so unselfish on this team and it's it's off the court and I think it carries over to on the court and uh, you're seeing that with the way we're playing out there. I had an amazing time tonight. I didn't have an amazing time all season. I felt like uh you know we're playing great team basketball. Um you know, and we're just making each other better. And I feel like it, it, it's fun. It's fun playing basketball that way. 
Spurs will stay at home Wednesday to take on the Toronto Raptors. Then Friday, the LA Clippers come to town. On Saturday, the team travels to Denver, who lost to the LA Lakers last night, giving LA their first win of the season. Now to soccer, San Antonio. I always forget how loud those are. Uh, now to San Antonio <laughs> FC in the Western Conference Final with the second straight season, Alamo City Club punch their tickets to the next round with a resounding 3-0 victory over Oakland Roots SC at home Friday night. The team has been prepared for this moment throughout the season. Their opponent in the finals, a familiar foe, Colorado Spring, Spring Switchbacks FC. Colorado third seed and they defeated Sacramento Republic in the other Western Conference semifinal. And that gets you jumping any day, right, Steph? Yes. San Antonio won both their regular season meetings 1-0, including the most recent at Toyota Field September 20th. This is where the rematch will be this Sunday night, not Saturday, Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. As expected, Zeke Elliott did not play against the Bears yesterday after suffering an injury to his right knee in the Cowboys' victory over the Lions last week. First drive, Dak calls his own numbers, scores from seven yards out at 7 nothing Cowboys. Very next drive, Dak finds CeeDee Lamb for this 21-yard touchdown catch back of the end zone in double coverage. Cowboys lead 14-0 after one. Craziest play later. Justin Fields quarterback connects with David Montgomery fumbles the ball. Micah Parson picks it up. No one touches him while he's on the ground, including Fields, who leaps over him. Parson gets back up and runs 36 yards for what could be the play of the year so far. Dallas quickly goes up by 19. Here's your final Cowboys win big 49 to 29 rivalry game between Titans and Texans in Houston. Despite the four and two record by Tennessee, there was not a lot of offense in this one early. Second quarter, Derrick Henry from, finds the end zone from 29 yards out. Titans led 7-3 at the half. Titans would uh, run game would completely destroy Houston because Henry was not done. Third quarter, Henry caps off a 65-yard drive with this one-yard score. He had 32 carries for 219 yards. Titans rack up uh, game racked up 314 total yards between three players. Titans win 70 to 10. Houston is now 1-5 and 1. Ouch. on the season. That <laughs> is an ouch, Stephanie. Said. Yes. Time now for 44 and we're in the 60s this morning, I believe. Coming up next, new details on Tom Brady's divorce, including how the former power couple will divide their combined financial empire that's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And welcome back. It's 447. Now that Tom Brady and Giselle Boonshin have confirmed they are divorcing, questions about how the former power couple will divide their financial empire. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, new details on Tom Brady and Giselle Boonshin's divorce. They have very much not had the same goal when it comes to their relationship as a couple, but they do have the same goals when it comes to their children. And that means, you know, creating a safe environment for them to really feel like they have everything that they need and what they care about most and are most focused on is, you know, sharing custody of the kids and making the kids feel safe and supported. Now, as they move forward for their family, questions about how the former power couple will divide their combined financial empire, Fortune estimating it's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. But I assume since they have so much money, they'll each be leaving this marriage uh, very comfortably and um, hopefully without a lot of problems. And we'll tell you what's next for the high wattage couple coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Outside with Trans Guy looking for obvious signs of problem on your early Halloween morning right now. Of course, it being a school night, we want you to be extra careful as you try to get home and celebrate with your kiddos and then maybe get home again to get them to bed <laughs> close to <laughs> on time as possible. We'll, we'll, we'll do our best. <laughs> and I'm very proud of our team this morning. Everybody's all festive. Mike even has uh, yes. skull and cr uh, yes. skull, uh, skull uh, cufflinks. Yeah. The, very, uh, that Van Gogh exhibits yeah. oh, um, nice. earlier, where it was all immersive and all that stuff. So it's yeah, yeah one of his uh, cool. his paintings there. So it's called, yeah, yeah, um, your orange and purple. You know, I have Halloween socks on, socks? but my leg okay. doesn't stretch Here. like that. Here, I got you. Um, <laughs> don't want to do that. You know, if you have a lot of trick or treaters in your neighborhood, make sure you got plenty of candy right now. And all that. But and then 
just don't go out. You know, it's just because trying to avoid all the kids and everything like that when they're all running around and anxious. So uh, grab an umbrella. If you don't need it, you can then open it and turn it upside down and use it as another candy. Yeah, carrier. get more so candy, right? That's, Perfect. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I'm <laughs> glad we're on the same page there. So, uh, oh, my this, goodness. <laughs> great shot. I love this. Presenting for your astonishment, Wombi the Iron Bull, the strongest bully in the world. <laughs> That's fantastic. We've got some, some more great pictures coming up throughout the, uh, the course of the morning. Thank you for the KSAC Connect picture. And, of course, just uh, download the app and you can send those in. We've got some high clouds hanging around here right now. We're going to keep a fair amount of clouds around throughout the day. Maybe a bit more sunshine, say, the middle of the day. Still with plenty of clouds. 56 right now, 53 Converse, 40s in the hill country. So it is cool out there. We do have, well, temp dew point temperatures are well below 60, so it's not overly humid. Humid, but there is some more humidity out there. Dew points are in the 40s and 50s as of right now. Throughout the rest of the morning, we'll drop down to 53 degrees, so not a big drop in temperatures this morning. And then we are going to make it up into the uh, 60s throughout the late morning hours. Again, a little bit more sunshine, 72 degrees today at noon. Top off at 78 with plenty of clouds around here. Now, as far as any rain chances, here's the computer model, and both short-range computer models I like to look at are pretty much in agreement with this. Plenty of clouds around here. Again, some sunshine mixed in here and there throughout the mid-afternoon hours and notice how this one has one little speck right there a couple more in portions of the uh, western hill country this is at five o'clock then going to 6 30 maybe a couple of more in parts of the hill country and again just scattered about a few more out there so if you're an early trick-or-treater especially for those little ones it's going to be better odds there's going to be better odds of not seeing any sprinkles around here but then as the evening rolls on a few more of these little scattered showers around the area and then in the overnight hours we'll have some more rain it looks like tomorrow morning is going to be a bit on the damp side here and there with a couple of these showers hanging around here in through about the the mid morning hours now as far as the rest of the week humidity which is not bad right now is definitely going to be creeping up as we go into the middle part of the week and this is going to hold low temperatures very very mild but then notice how it just drops like a rock there friday into saturday another front's going to move on through here on saturday we will have a rain chance Friday, Friday night, early Saturday morning. But then after that, looks like things are going to be just fantastic for the first weekend of November and one of the best days of the year coming up this uh, this Saturday night into Sunday. 72 degrees today at noon, partly sunny skies and then a high temperature today of 78, mostly cloudy. A couple of sprinkles are going to be possible later on this evening. Just again, take an umbrella just to be on the safe side. So tomorrow 72, so it is going to be cooler. 30% chance for some rain, primarily first portion of the day, then very mild in the mid to latter part of the week. We got that chance of rain Friday. Front's going to move through rain early Saturday, then clearing on out. I know first weekend of worst fest and should be good Saturday and Sunday for that. And then what is Sunday? Strike up the band, fall back. Yay. Before you go to bed Saturday night, set your clocks back an hour back to God's time, as my mom likes to call it. So. <laughs> Get it back right. It's going to be a great week. Worst Fest starts on Friday? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be busy. Mm -hmm. Friday for Worst Fest, uh -huh. maybe a little bit iffy, but Saturday, Sunday. Okay. So so Friday worst, Saturday better. Better. Okay. Thank, thank we, you, Mike. We got it. Yes. <laughs> Four 53s, 55 degrees. <laughs> Coming up next, find out how much Black Adam brought in during its second weekend at the box office. Plus, a look at Netflix's new Witcher. Here are your lottery numbers. Don't forget that uh, Powerball tonight is one billion dollars. Oh my goodness. Up for grabs. Pick three, zero, zero, four, Fireball five, daily four, five, six, three, six, Fireball zero. Cash five, two, four, eight, 13, 31. Lotto, Texas, three, eight, 26, 30, 43, 52. And your Powerball numbers, 19, 31, 40, 46, 57, Powerball 23, Power Play 3. Good luck. Black Adam rules Condock and the box office, and there's a new Witcher coming to Netflix. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. Heroes don't kill people. 
Well, I do. Black Adam has scored a second week atop the box office. The superhero flick earned another $27.7 million to post a two-week domestic gross of $111 million. Bucks, $250 million when you add international numbers. E, let's go. Let's go. Can we get something a little more age-appropriate for these two? The romantic comedy Ticket to Paradise held the second spot for week two. Another $10 million there. Let's descend into the mouth of hell, shall we? It's a third-place debut for the horror flick Pray for the Devil. It was delayed twice due to the pandemic, but Billboard reports Lady Gaga's just-concluded Chromatica Ball World Tour grossed $112 bucks. Liam Hemsworth's taking over the starring role in Netflix's The Witcher for its fourth season. Current star Henry Cavill's no doubt going to have his hands full as he returns to the big screen as Superman. And Black Panther Wakanda Forever star Letitia Wright is 29 Monday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. And time now for 57 and 55 degrees for now. Still ahead, we're taking you to the special festival to help remember the lives of the 21 victims killed at Robb Elementary School and raise money for scholarships for Uvalde High School seniors. And today, the future of affirmative action in higher education is on the table as the Supreme Court wades into the admissions program at some of the nation's top university. What the ruling could mean for students very soon. Trans guide right now, things look good at 35 and I-37 southbound. RJ Marquez is handling traffic duties today. We will talk to him coming up at the top of the hour. Stick around. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. The heart of the issue is, should colleges and universities treat students differently because of their race and their ethnicity? The U.S. Supreme Court is hearing arguments today and challenges to policies at universities that consider race when evaluating applications for admission, how the ruling could change things going forward. Outside with live cam down to the mid 50s this morning, clear skies otherwise and some humidity you might catch your Halloween forecast coming up. And I always double check the date for good measure just to make sure I'm right. But today I got it. It's actually Monday, <laughs> October 31st. Yeah, we know that one. Happy Earth. Halloween. <laughs> That's one easy to remember. We're glad the weather's kind of working out. Yes, Mike. Another easy one for you is 4th of July. So. I know. Oh, yes. 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 And uh, Christmas Day. Yeah. Well, this is 4th of July <laughs> kind of is in itself, right? Sure. Yes, and, and April Fool's too, right? Oh, so yeah. Don't forget that one. True. Okay. And uh, anyway, uh, right now we have temperatures that are in the mid 50s. The humidity is okay this morning. It's uh, you kind of notice it when you step outside. A little bit of a, a breeze out of the northwest at five miles per hour. We've got some high clouds hanging around here too, so we're not going to drop down all that much. And then we're going to warm up to the upper 70s, so close to a normal high temperature later on today. Plenty in the way of clouds. Maybe a bit more sunshine. Roughly the middle portion of the day. As far as the aquifer from over the weekend did go up as it usually does over the weekend up eight tenths of a foot and the allergens mold and juniper are both on the low side this morning. So we've got uh, fairly mild conditions and that's going to be the situation throughout the rest of today. Now mostly cloudy cool and then we're going to have mostly cloudy skies later on today. Upper 70s like I said so it's going to be nice not too hot for Halloween. There is that chance for a couple of sprinkles later on tonight. Um, if you go trick or treating early on this evening, I think you're going to have a better chance of not seeing a couple of sprinkles tomorrow than overnight tonight and tomorrow morning. We're going to have mainly uh, the first part of the day, some showers around here, low 70s. So we are going to be dropping down somewhat. Then rest of the week, a lot going on, milder temperatures, a little bit of sunshine, um, but basically leaning toward the cloudier side. Chance of rain late in the week, maybe late Thursday night, Friday, and then Friday night, early Saturday morning. Then we're going to be clearing out, and right now the weekend looks absolutely fantastic. Back to trick or treating forecast more specifically, and I love the ghost coming in, walking through the pumpkin patch right there. 78 degrees at 5 o'clock, 75 at 7 o'clock, and again, that chance for just a couple of little sprinkly showers, especially as you go into the evening. Odds are not that great, but you might want to take an umbrella just to be on the, uh, the safe side. We're going to have a closer look at the uh, first weekend of November coming up. That's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority in this morning, R.J. You like the... Uh, the 
RJ Marquez. I do like that. I do that. A little walk-up music this morning to start your Monday and happy Halloween to everyone out there. Hopefully everyone had a good weekend. Taking a look here at our TransGuy traffic cameras to start and things are a little bit slow out there in the city. There are a couple of things to kind of let you guys know about I-37 at Fair Avenue. You can see things looking pretty smooth there. So let's take a look at our maps and you can see there are a couple of things showing up here uh, that's being generated by our by our maps here. And this one right here downtown, it looks to be just a uh, fire incident, so nothing nothing too big there. But I do want to take you out to this one out on the uh, northwest side there. This is Loop 1604 east down, eastbound at Babcock Road. You can see a little bit of an activity there. There was a crash reported there. It gets a little bit more details, but you can see both eastbound and westbound lanes there still moving along pretty smooth. And then we take you back closer to downtown. This one right here, this was US 90 eastbound at, Zar at Zarzamora Street. Street, a reported crash and I just saw the TransGuide traffic cameras and it looks like there is a little bit of a backup there so I will continue to follow this as we move along this morning again I-37 eastbound there at Southeast Military 1604 and this is the one that we we're talking about here 90 at General McMullen looks like we have some significant activity so we'll get you a little bit more details on that as we move along on this Monday morning Mark and Stephanie Thank you, RJ. The Uvalde community rallied together to remember the lives of the 21 victims killed at Robb Elementary to raise money for scholarships for Uvalde High School seniors. In the inaugural Remember the Names Festival, hundreds arrived at the Uvalde County Fairplex Sunday to participate. There were different events to honor each victim, including a barbecue competition for slain teacher Irma Garcia and her husband Joe, who died just days after the massacre. Irma's siblings, Velma and Marcus, say although there is still a great deal of sadness, they know this is the best way they can honor their sister and brother-in-law. The outcome that we have, it's a blessing. We feel the love and hopefully the healing process will begin. And then we'll just continue this yearly and remember of their names. It being for scholarships, it's just a beautiful way to honor Joe and Irma. They would love it. Uvalde High School seniors will be writing letters to apply for the scholarships over the next couple of weeks for families to select the recipient of their loved one's scholarship. An argument over many spurred a shooting that left one person hurt. It happened back on October 21st, and now police have arrested the suspect. And there was something specific that made it easy for the victim to identify him. That black eye led 19-year-old Jordan Arasa to be charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. San Antonio police say Arasa believed the 42-year-old victim owned, owed him money. The victim punched Arasa and told him to leave. That is when police say he shot the victim in the chest. Arasa was identified as a suspect through a single photo. Today starts a new week of early voting for the November 8th midterm election. In the first six days so far, 180,856 people have voted early here in Bear County. This year, more than 1.2 million people are registered to vote. If you plan on hitting the polls, there are 51 early voting locations available. Some early voting locations include Brook Hollow Library and the Parman Library in Stone Oak for a full list uh, or for more important voting information, head on over to ksat.com. 40 years of precedent upholding affirmative action in higher education on the line today at the United States Supreme Court. The justices will hear arguments that could reshape higher education in the years to come. ABC's Derek Dennis explains. It's a question that's been debated for decades. Colleges and universities using race as a factor in admissions under the banner of affirmative action. Once we remove that factor from the equation, I think it'll be a more, more of, a, of an even playing field. ABC News asked a group of students from public and private universities for their views as the Supreme Court, with its conservative majority, including three justices of color and the first black woman justice, begin hearing arguments today for and against affirmative action. Affirmative action isn't like reducing a consideration of merit or hard work or anything. It's actually amplifying it and looking at... Um, the merit of overcoming adversity as well. The divide underscored in a new poll showing more than six out of 10 Americans oppose using race or ethnicity in college admissions, with African Americans notably almost evenly split. A student's race or ethnicity should not be used to help him or harm him 
in his chances of gaining admission to a competitive college. Edward Bloom is founder of Students for Fair Admissions. He fought to get two cases before the Supreme Court today, one against Harvard, the other against the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, challenging affirmative action in higher ed. The heart of the issue is, should colleges and universities treat students differently because of their race and their ethnicity? He believes the court should come to the same conclusion and ban race-conscious admissions nationwide. Right now, roughly 20% of four-year public universities consider race during their admissions process. The Supreme Court could roll back existing rules or overturn affirmative action policies entirely. A decision is not expected before next spring. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. And many travel sites consider San Antonio as one of the most haunted places in the U.S. We have, to come, we have come up with a list of 31 reported haunted places in San Antonio and South Texas. The list consists of historical sites, hotels, abandoned places, and hospitals. You can check it out right now on KSET.com. 510, 55 degrees. Some of the newest trick-or-treaters in San Antonio are dressing up for Halloween this year. We're going to show you more of the costumes being worn by babies in the NICU at the Children's Hospital of San Antonio. And that blue check mark on Twitter is going to start costing you every single month. We'll tell you how much and when those changes start. And a quick look outside with live cam, rise and shine. It's Halloween and we're starting at 55 degrees. We'll be right back. Today is officially Halloween. However, celebrations have been happening all weekend. One of the big Halloween parties San Antonio has is the Shrine Auditorium Pavilion. Now, the party featured lots of music, food, pumpkin carving, and of course, trick or treating. Organizers say the response from those in attendance has been phenomenal. Everybody's so excited. We have return visitors. They all come out, they enjoy themselves, uh, and it's just it's a safe environment for kids to come out and enjoy Halloween. And luckily for the kiddos, there were two haunted house options, fun or scary. Perfect weekend for all of that. 514, 55 degrees. And if you ordered or plan to get Apple's 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros, why well, you're gonna have to wait a lot longer until it arrives. <laughs> Chocolate Beyond Words. Classic recipe by Lindt. Dude, you coming? Because the only thing dripping should be your style. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. With Elka Seltzer Plus cold and flu relief. Also try for fizzy fast cough relief. Okay, everyone, our mission is complete balanced nutrition. Together, we support immune function, supply fuel for immune cells, and sustain tissue health. Ensure with 25 vitamins and minerals, and ensure complete with 30 grams of protein. With Gold Bond, you can age on your own terms. New Retinol Overnight means the smoothing benefits of retinol are now for your whole body. Plus, fast-working crepe corrector diminishes wrinkled skin in just two days. Gold Bond, champion your skin. In today's Tech Bytes, a new revenue stream for Twitter. Reports say new owner Elon Musk wants to charge users to maintain their verified status. The reported cost would be $20 per month for Twitter Blue. Musk tweeted Sunday the verification process is being revamped. Apple's upcoming MacBook Pro might not arrive until next year. The 14 and 16 inch laptops were expected to be released at the end of this year, but Bloomberg now says it may be pushed back to early March to coincide with the launch of the company's next iOS update. Finally, Google is out with great Great Ghoul Duel 2, a sequel to its popular multiplayer Halloween game from 2018. Like the original, two teams of four ghosts collect as many wandering spirit flames as possible. It must be played by the end of the day. I remember playing this ghost game last year, or maybe I'm just having a bit of deja vu. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. That was almost four yeah. thumbs down. It was. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, since, I'm still laughing. <laughs> since it is Halloween, we wanted to show you some of San Antonio's newest and tiniest trick-or-treaters. Yeah, get ready for this. These are the babies in the neonatal oh. intensive care unit at the Children's Hospital of San Antonio dressed up 
for Halloween and look at them in their costumes. So we have Bob Ross, princesses. Uh, actually, we even have Jif peanut butter somewhere there. Elvis, a taco, a corn uh -huh. on the cob. Mm -hmm ice cream comb, and so many other cute costumes. There's now, the There's GIF. a GIF. <laughs> these costumes were made with love, especially for these NICU babies. This year, it's one way the hospital is trying to help brighten mom and dad's day and allow these babies to get in the Halloween spirit. Absolutely adorable. Aww. Little ladybug there, too. And we did see Bob Ross with the, uh, oh, okay. the palette, no, the, the paints there's and things like that. And there's the little... <laughs> Little taco. Oh, and, Elvis. and Elvis is in the building. Oh, mm -hmm. that's hilarious. Look. That's great. The, and then the little pumpkin, you know, the, to go trick or treating. Oh, look at the ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can watch this all day. Well, happy Halloween, everybody. <laughs> RJ's got an update on our morning commute. Yeah, guys, uh, starting to pick up a little bit here out on the roads. And let's go ahead and get back to our screen here as we get set here to talk about a couple of accidents. This one here on uh, US 90 eastbound at South General McMullen. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll through some of our trans guide traffic cameras kind of give you a little bit better description of what we're looking at here. And again, we have one lane backed up here, US 90 at General McMullen, and uh, this is causing some pretty significant issues, even going as far back as uh, 236. I'm going to try and pull up that camera as well. Let's see if we could find it. And let's see, we have here 12. Right there, you can see US 90 at 36. So this incident here on uh, right now on 90 eastbound lane, South General McMullen, um, backing things up pretty significantly right now. And this is kind of the biggest thing that we're looking at right now, guys, as we look at our trans guide traffic cameras. Again, some serious backup here. US 90 eastbound, so just uh, take caution if you are headed out into this area. Also, another accident being reported on I-10 uh, in the northwest side at Days of Vala. So we will continue to follow this as we move along. So guys, yeah, it's been a very busy morning so far as people get out on the roads. You can see a lot of traffic lights now in this area. Mike? and uh, dry roads for right now. First of all, take a look at this picture. Isn't that absolutely adorable? This is Nola. She is a therapy dog over there at Pediatric Therapy Specialist. Wickedly cute. Absolutely adorable. Love that picture. Thank you very much for the KSAC con Connect picture. Just scan that QR code and uh, it's going to make it really easy to send in some of those pictures or just download the app. So we've got a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning and we're going to keep plenty of them around throughout the rest of the day. A little bit more a little bit more sunshine kind of mixed in, say, middle portion of the day, but just plenty of these clouds this morning. We'll stay in the 50s and go up through the 60s. Late morning, 72 at noon, top off at 78. So temperatures are actually pretty close to normals, both the low end and the high end of things. Plenty of clouds later on, and it's not going to be until this evening when we see, I don't think, the chance for a couple of sprinkles around here. So here's a computer model, one of the short range computer models. As you saw, a little bit of clearing here, but then plenty of clouds mixed in, some sunshine here and there. And by late in the afternoon, it's got one or two little sprinkles scattered about the area. That's, I think, going to be a the amount of coverage that we see, uh, perhaps a little bit of mist here or there, but it's not going to be a lot. Um, take an umbrella just to be on the, the safe side, but most everything is going to wait until later tonight uh, throughout the evening hours. Again, perhaps just a couple little sprinkles mixed in here and there, and then later on we start to see a bit more in the way of some showers. Looks like tomorrow morning's commute is going to be on the, the wet side around here, and some of that rain primarily will be in the first portion of the day tomorrow. So dew points over the rest of the week. Humidity is going to go up. It's yay, not bad this morning. Some humidity out there, but dew points are definitely going to start to go up throughout the rest of the week, especially on Friday. And then notice how it drops off. We have a front moving through here and that's going to uh, clear things out quite nicely. So here's another computer model long range. Again, evening hours, not much. This kind of broad brushes things. Of course, there's the rain the first portion of the day tomorrow. We keep a lot of clouds around middle portion of the week and then Friday. This is that chance for some rain and then especially Friday night into early Saturday morning that moves out fairly quickly by late morning and that's going to clear things out nicely later on in the day on Saturday as well as for Sunday. Again, get rid of the humidity and another fantastic weekend. Great, especially on Sunday for more reasons than just the weather. 72 degrees at noon, partly sunny skies. High temperature today up to uh, 78, mostly cloudy. A couple little sprinkles or light shower later on in the evening. Again, for the, the early trick-or-treaters, 
think it's going to be fine out there. Just grab an umbrella to be on the, the safe side. And then tomorrow we start off with some rain, especially the first portion of the day. 72 for high temperatures, so it is going to be on the cool side, but then very mild Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Chance of rain Friday overnight into early Saturday, and then we clear on out on uh, Saturday afternoon, Sunday. Ah, oh, yes. And the, one of the best days of the year, we fall back on Sunday. So set your clocks back an hour before you go to bed Saturday night. So cr for us, Christmas, fall time change, uh, maybe birthdays, right? And then kind of rank right up there together. Sure. 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 <laughs> and at least tonight's not a rain out because there are other no. parts of the country. There's going to be, a, I mean, it's going to be a complete rain out for Halloween yeah, tonight. A couple little sprinkles. That's sure. going to be uh, the extent of it. So. Okay, great. We're glad. Thank you, Mike. 524, 55 degrees. And it's been a big week so far for Taylor Swift. I have a thing where I get older, but just never wiser. Find out who T Swift is now tied with now that her new album, Midnight's, had the best first week of any album in nearly seven years. Big music and movie news as a record setting album in a record-setting album and a super-sized sequel. Here's CNN's David Daniel with today's Hollywood. First week of any album in nearly seven years. It's already the year's top album in overall sales and vinyl sales. And it's tied Swift with Barbara Streisand for the most number one albums by a female artist, 11. I know one thing, wherever we go, It's been a long wait for the follow-up to Avatar, 13 years, and perhaps fittingly, the sequel will be a long movie. Though there's no official runtime yet, according to multiple reports, Avatar The Way of Water will run more than three hours. The original, which ran two hours and 41 minutes, is the top-grossing movie of all time worldwide, with $2.9 billion. We'll see whether longer means even more money when Avatar The Way of Water opens in theaters December 16th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 528, 54 degrees. Charges are expected today for the person accused of attacking the spouse of House, Spe spouse of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. The new information investigators are saying about this suspect. And they're not vampires, but the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center really needs your blood. Find out what their goal is for the community and how and when you can help. What happened to Speaker Pelosi's husband, Paul Pelosi, is just, I mean, it's horrific. And it's horrible, and it shouldn't happen anyway. Doctors provide an update on the husband of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi following an attack. The charges the suspect is facing later this morning. And taking a look outside with live cam, 54 degrees, happy Halloween, starting a little humid, but things will look better this afternoon. And it is Monday, the 31st, and be extra careful. It's a school night, so people are going to be rushing around all evening trying to get there and then get home. Yes, we'll be checking in with you in just a Absolutely. minute. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, it's already getting a little bit busy out there, guys, so we will talk about that here in just a second. Also, 5 o'clock shadows have arrived uh, <laughs> at 532, <laughs> kind of a, a pre, did we cut kind of a jump start on? No shave, didn't we? Yes, we, since no shave officially begins tomorrow, right. but you know, like last year, that Friday was the last day we shaved, so we right. decided to not, you know, after Friday, stop shaving. So we asked the boss, and she said, "Yeah, go for it." Yeah. That's awesome. So, and so. again, a lot of uh, individual uh, charities. You know, we're we're kind of having that little individual competition, but the whole team case at. So if you'd like to donate, that would be wonderful. More to come on yeah. that tomorrow. Surprised you didn't say so. hit hit. What, for Team, team Mike? Team, <laughs> team Osterhage. Team Silver Hair? Come on, come on, folks. Come on. <laughs> We've earned this silver hair. So anyway, uh, as far as Halloween trick-or-treating is concerned, it's going to be great weather overall for it. There is that small little chance for a couple of, uh, couple of sprinkles, but we're not going to have anything too awfully hot. It's not going to be too humid at all. So, you know, it's not going to be sweating in costumes or anything. Actually, uh, you know, even into this evening, perhaps a... A light little jacket and an umbrella as well, just to be on the safe side. 56 degrees right now, dew points at 49. So we're still well below 60 as far as the humidity is concerned, but it's almost that dampish cool out there just because 
temperature and, and dew point are getting kind of close to each other. 46 in Bernie stage, 47 comfort, 56 at Stinson. And uh, we do have mold and juniper both on the light side. Uh, obviously, the updated count is going to come out later on this morning. 72 at noon, 78 for a high temperature. A lot of clouds around here, maybe a bit more sunshine, say right around lunchtime, middle chunk of the day. Then as we go into the evening hours, a couple of showers around here. So a little more specific as far as the uh, timeline is concerned. And once again, I love the ghosts coming in in the, that graphic. So uh, 78 at at five o'clock right around dinner time. heading out to go trick or treating. Maybe just after that through seven o'clock, 75 degrees, a couple little sprinkly showers, very few and far between just a mention of it. And then perhaps a couple of more going into the, the later evening hours. Overnight tonight, the better chance for some rain. But as far as trick or treating, I think it's going to be a great evening for it. Just kind of keep that in mind as far as a one or two of those sprinkles out there. We're going to take a look ahead to the first couple of days of November in just a few minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ, what's cooking? Yeah, Mike, uh, Team Silver here. I really, really like that. I would donate to that. Thank you. <laughs> as very we all much. have our own individual teams this year, of course, for the bigger project here with KSAT 12. So let's start out with our Transguide traffic cameras here. And this is the thing that we're following at the moment at uh, US 90 eastbound at General McMullen. So this is actually reported a little bit further down eastbound at uh, on Zarza Morris Street. So we'll take a look at the wide maps and show you that this is a little bit uh, just west of downtown. So people making their way into this area have a little bit to contend with this morning as we get a little bit closer and you can see that uh, traffic is still moving pretty smooth there but now we're starting to see a little bit of yellow there and we saw from that transguide traffic shot uh, that there are emergency vehicles on the road again this is reported as a crash right now and at least one lane blocked but as crews continue to clear that area we could see that continue to build up just a little bit more so let's take you back out to this shot again uh, us 90 the crash reported at us 90 eastbound at zarzamora but this is our transguide traffic shot from uh, general mcmullen i'm going to show you one more quick little shot uh, this is uh, backed up the other end of this this is 90 at 36, so you can see that this is causing a pretty significant uh, delay or at least a slowdown in that area. So just be cautious if you're headed out on this Monday morning. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, RJ. This potentially could be the last time someone has to deal with back to work Monday morning blues. There's a huge Powerball jackpot up for grabs tonight, an estimated $1 billion. Katrina Weber is live downtown with that story. And Katrina, we understand this is only the second time we have seen numbers that high. Well, that's right. The first and only time we heard the word billion in reference to the Powerball was back in 2016. That's when the jackpot was about one and a half billion dollars. Now, this time we're talking about an even billion. That's what the jackpot is expected to be tonight, which is no small change in my opinion anyway. Now, as you can imagine, the anticipation is building. People had high hopes this weekend before the jackpot even reached this high, but no one won the big prize Saturday night. Seven tickets that were sold in that drawing did have five winning numbers. Those people, including one right here in Texas, each took home a million dollars. But again, all eyes tonight are on that billion dollar prize. And while, you know, we always hear about people's big plans for these big jackpots, I don't even know if I could count that high, but I, I guess I better start working on my list. Mark, Stephanie, what are you guys uh, planning if you win that big jackpot? Oh gosh, I don't even know, Katrina. We will think about it and get back to you. On to other news this morning at 537. The man accused of attacking Paul Pelosi, the husband of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, is expected to be charged today. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, Pelosi remains in the hospital this morning. Madam Speaker, how's your husband doing? It's an incident that has lawmakers shaken nationwide. What happened to Speaker Pelosi's husband, Paul Pelosi, is just... I mean, it's horrific, and it's horrible, and it shouldn't happen anywhere. David DePap is accused of breaking into the Pelosi home in San Francisco on Friday, fracturing Paul Pelosi's skull and injuring his arm and hands. We've got to say, let's, let's have a, we can have a heated conversation about the issues, but this violence has got to stop. A spokesperson says Paul Pelosi is expected to make a full recovery, but the House Speaker says the alleged attack has left her family heartbroken and traumatized. I believe people in both parties are, are guilty of uh, uh, intense rhetoric that really leads to, uh, you know, feed into these people who are deranged and create violence. 
Authorities say the 42-year-old DePap was not known on any federal databases tracking threats. But they did say DePap posted conspiracy theories about COVID-19 vaccines and the 2020 election on Facebook. President Joe Biden commented over the weekend, blaming the assault on the spread of political misinformation. We can't just say, I feel badly about the violence. We condemn it. Condemn what produces the violence. And this talk produces the violence. I'm John Lawrence reporting. In India, a military team searching for people missing after a century-old pedestrian bridge collapsed into a river, killing at least 132 people. More than 100 fell into the Machu River when the pedestrian bridge collapsed. Live video reports showed hundreds of clinging to the broken structure and trying to make their way to safety. At least 177 survivors were pulled from the river and teams from the Army, Navy and Indian Air Force were searching for others still missing. The bridge had just reopened after repairs. Officials said the bridge gave way because it was overloaded with tourists. The disaster is one of the worst accidents in India in the past decade. New York City has agreed to pay $26 million to settle lawsuits filed by two men wrongfully convicted of assassinating Malcolm X. Muhammad Aziz and Khalil Islam, Islam had been convicted of the 1965 assassination of Malcolm X, but Aziz and Islam were exonerated last year after a judge found serious miscarriages of justice in their cases. Both men served more than 20 years in prison, but Islam died in 2009 and received a posthumous exoneration. The push to establish their innocence came after the 2020 Netflix documentary called Who Killed Malcolm X? But a spokesperson says the money will be split evenly between Aziz and Islam to state. Right now, 540, 54 degrees. McDonald's is already hitting a jackpot of its own. Find out how those Big Macs and McDoubles you ordered contributed to a big day for Ronald McDonald. Up next, usually on Halloween, is vampires looking for your blood. But today is the <laughs> South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. They need your help serving the 48 counties across our region. We'll tell you what their goal is to make sure people get the gift of life they need. I'm loving these teases, our producer Hardy's right. He's doing morning. a great job this morning. <laughs> yes, he is. Happy Halloween, guys. Looking outside there with live cam, 54 degrees. We'll be right back. 543, welcome back. Uh, there is a consistent need for blood donations in and around our community. We've seen people step and help up and help rather, but the need persists. Roger with South Texas Blood and Tissue Center joined the leading essay this weekend to talk about how the need what the need is and how you can help. Blood donations are crucial for our community here around South Texas. Uh, South Texas Blood and Tissue Center serves 48 counties across our region. We spoke with Roger Ruiz from the organization and he talked about how blood donations are so important for so many different people, especially pediatric cancer patients. And blood helps them boost their cell count back up so they continue um, to not have to wait for treatment. And so this helps them greatly. 30% um, of our blood goes to these patients and that's why it's so important that you continue to donate, donate blood, donate platelets. We need it. We need both. Roger also said that the ideal supply of blood donations is at a six day supply. We are not there yet. And he is also reminding people that those blood donations, they go down during the holidays. So encouraging anyone who can step up and help out to do just that. If you're interested in helping out, we have all that information. Just head to KSAT.com. If you want to watch the entire interview with Roger, we also have that on KSAT.com. We have leading essay every Sunday, 8 a.m. So guys, we'll see you next Sunday. Back to you. Thank you, Max. 545, 55 degrees. And what better place to carve a pumpkin than under the sea, right? We'll take you to this unique pumpkin carving contest in Florida. And RJ is tracking traffic for all of us. There's Highway 90 at 36th Street. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 547. Your morning consumer headlines. Investors are loving it. McDonald's stock hit an all-time high on Friday with a share price of $274. This comes after the fast food company's third quarter results beat Wall Street expectations. Now McDonald's saw success by raising prices and adding new promotions like adult Happy Meals. The Internal Revenue Service says tax evasion has increased over the years between 2014 and 2016. The estimated gross tax gap increased to $496 billion. That is $58 billion more than the previous three-year period. Last year, it collected more than $4 trillion in taxes, penalties, interest, and user fees.
There are pumpkin carving contests and then there are underwater pumpkin carving contests and the Florida Keys an annual underwater pumpkin carving contest this weekend featured 18 scuba divers. The competitors carved their jack-o'-lanterns near Horseshoe Reef about five miles off of Key Largo. 25 feet below the surface the divers created everything from sharks to jellyfish to pirate pumpkins. Curious saltwater fish swam close to nibble on bits of the orange gourds that floated off. Now the winners got a free dive trip for two at a dive resort in Key Largo, Florida. I almost cut myself carving on dry land. I wonder if it the chance goes up underwater. I, I can't even <laughs> imagine being there that long to concentrate and doing all that. Looked like they were having fun. Though. Yeah, though, that's a good job. Let's go ahead and check in with RJ to see how our roads are looking. It's Halloween morning. Yeah, I agree, Mark. Uh, I have enough trouble doing that above ground, so above water, so yeah. So that's a tough, great job there from them. Very artistic. So guys, looking to look at our trans guy traffic cameras here. Uh, this was the incident that we were following earlier. This is 90 at uh, General McMullen, and you can see that traffic now. They're moving pretty smooth, so that is some good news for uh, drivers in that area as we take a closer look here at our bigger maps and you can see our uh, maps are still showing this uh, at 90 and Zarzamora Street. Of course, this is backed up to General McMullen, but again, things have cleared up there. Now, there is one other crash that I just wanted to kind of mention here, and this was something I was seeing a little bit earlier on TransGuide. This is at I-10 westbound at UTSA Boulevard, and right now, traffic still moving pretty smooth in that area, but of course, that northwest side area always gets very, very busy, and I do have a TransGuide traffic camera shot that I wanted to show you guys as I move, step out of the way just a little bit. Uh, this is, again, I-10 our trans guide shot from I-10 at De Zavala, and you can see the traffic starting to build up just a little bit more in this area. Um, again, this crash reported on the westbound lanes at UTSA Boulevard, so this is definitely something that we will continue to follow. But again, good news there, that 90 Zarzamora Street accident appears to have been cleared up as traffic moving along there, but this is now the latest thing that we are following. Guys? He's coming on. I'm over. coming over yes, here. Yes. You know, with <laughs> Marquez Party of Four, your table's available. Marquez Party of Four. <laughs> seat you, not early here I am. Why is that? In the at restaurants, the they say, "Oh, unless your whole party's here, we can't seat you yet." Some, 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 some restaurants let you get away with it. I don't know because yeah. it slows down the entire process for the server. Yeah. As far as getting everybody taken care of in a timely fashion. Yeah. Saw a comedian last night. He was talking about that. And when when the party doesn't show up, and they mentioned it's like last call for. He's like. Don't move on the next family. I want to know what happened to the one you just called for that didn't show up. What happened to them? Um, it just took off. No, what I was going to say, back Things to the pumpkin carving thing. I found years ago um, a large drywall saw, Oh. you know, the handheld thing, with a large rubber grip. Great, because you get all the pumpkin guts on there and everything like that, and you yes. still have a good grip instead of those little plastic things. So for the big, the big cuts, works out fantastic. That wow. is so yeah. my mm. oster yeah, so, oh, you, you can handle that. I, no, 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 <laughs> but, but, it, but it's, very, yeah. it's very easy, you know, just uh. to, to do it like that. Instead of a knife or something and your, your hand can slip so large, it's a, with a big rubber grip on it. Because those little kits you get, yes. you know, they bend and stuff. Oh, yeah, That's sure. for the fine detail work, but when you got to make the, just like the big <laughs> cuts, drywall yeah, saw. Usually we go through wow. a few kits to get it right. Yeah. yeah. So. All right. Good idea there. Speaking of, Aww. all right, skeletons can only guess the weather. Don't be a skeleton. Aww. I'll let you all say it. Trust, Trust case at weather. weather. <laughs> yes, it, boy, those skeletons are smart, aren't they? So, so. cute. Yes, they are. No yes. bones about it, Mike. <laughs> hey! <laughs> He'll be here the rest of the week, folks. Anyway, I love all the skeleton pictures. Thank you, thank you, thank you again for all of those really made Halloween fun as it has in years past. All right, lots of clouds around here this morning, and we're going to be seeing pretty much cloudy skies throughout the day. Some sunshine thrown in here and there. It's not going to be completely socked in, but leaning more toward the cloudier side. We'll drop down to 53 in the next couple of hours, and so slightly on the cool side compared to, uh, to normal, and then make it up to 72 at noon. Later on this afternoon, 78. Again, just about a normal high temperature this afternoon. Now, we do have the chance for a couple of sprinkly showers. Here's computer models. Again, leaning more toward cloudier skies, a couple of you know peaks of sunshine mixed in here and there as well. And then later on, we'll see one or two of those little sprinkles trying to pop up. This is at six o'clock tonight. And now some of it may be just that little fine mist out there, but for the most part, it's going to be dry. But there will be 
a couple of sprinkles or a couple of very light showers, and that's going to be the situation throughout the evening hours, but very, very few and far between. It's just the, the moisture that's going to be kind of coming back on in here, but we'll have better rain chances as we go into the overnight hours and then also going into uh, tomorrow morning with some showers around here. So it does look like it's going to be a wet commute tomorrow morning. Jumping ahead then. Now the week is going to be will be cool tomorrow, but the rest of the week then is going to be on the mild side. Then we get into Thursday, Friday, overnight Thursday into Friday. Some showers around here, not constant rain on Friday, but we'll have some showers around even into the evening hours. Then the next front moves on through here, and that's going to be late Friday night, early Saturday morning chance for showers and thunderstorms. Those will be clearing on out, and then we will see a fantastic weekend as we go into the latter half of the day on Saturday as well as Sunday. So 72 at noon today, partly sunny skies, high temperature up to 78 couple of sprinkles or some light showers, a mist or something later on into the evening hours. Then tomorrow we'll start off with some showers around here. 72 in the afternoon, upper 70s, low 80s rest of the week. And then that chance of rain late Friday, Saturday and the front moves through early on Friday. So a good looking first weekend of November. More after this. Even though many celebrated Halloween this weekend, there are still a lot of events happening today since it is actually Halloween. We have a big list of things you can do right now at ksat.com from haunted houses to the zoo boo to trick or treating. There's something for everyone. Click on the article available on ksat.com. Ahead in the next hour of GMSA, the Astros heading to Philly with all of the momentum in the World Series. We'll get you ready for game three tonight. And Transguide right now, flashing lights, 90 at Couples. We'll check back in with RJ coming up in just moments. This morning on GMSA, we are taking you to the special festival that helped to remember the lives of the 21 victims killed at Robb Elementary and to raise money for scholarships for Uvalde High School seniors. And it's a victory Monday for the Cowboys after the Dallas offense put on a clinic again yesterday against the Bears, including some big defensive plays. We've got highlights and look ahead to their next, next matchup. And rise and shine. It's Halloween morning, 6 o'clock a.m., 54 degrees. We have your forecast coming up. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is Monday, Halloween, October 31st. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a wonderful weekend. The weather certainly worked out, and we're hoping it will today as well. I'm hoping the sunrise is extra orange this morning. Mike Ostrage is here. Do we need a uh, umbrella for trick or treating tonight? Uh, well, first of all, sunrise. Mm, it's going to be kind of iffy because we've got a lot of clouds hanging around here. There may be sun, you know, a little bit kind of peeking through some of the clouds, but then uh, later on this evening, if you if you can keep one handy, you know, just because there's going to be a little bit of mist or maybe a sprinkle here or there. So a flashlight in one hand, umbrella in the other. <laughs> yeah, trick exactly. or treat bag. Uh, it's <laughs> not going to be around by any stretch. Uh, we'll just have one or two little sprinkles and or some mist around in the uh, evening hours. Got uh, some clouds hanging around here this morning. 55 at the airport, 45 Bernie Stage, mid 40s out in the hill country, 52 Converse, 53 in Seguin, as well as New Braunfels. Mold is on the low side, as well as Juniper. And then throughout the rest of the morning, we made drop down another couple of degrees here with mostly cloudy skies. A little bit more in the way of sunshine mixed in with the clouds, say late morning, early afternoon, and then we're going to cloud back up. We're going to be at 72 at noon and we'll top off today at 78 degrees and don't have anything as far as any sprinkles in this graphic right here. However, in this graphic for Halloween, we are going to be seeing and again, I love the ghosts on this thing. That's very cool. We're uh, at 78 degrees, 5 o'clock, 75 at 7 o'clock. So if you're going out trick or treating just after dinner time or right around dinner time, again, maybe a little bit of a sprinkle here or there and just carry an umbrella to be on the safe side. Like I said, you can open it up, turn it upside down, another candy holder. Anyway, uh, and then a couple more, especially as we go into the later part of the evening and then overnight is going to be the better chance for a little bit of rain. Got a couple more rain chances this week and also another front late in the week. Upcoming first weekend of November. Looking good. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ Marquez. What's going on, sir? 
Yeah, Mike, things looking pretty good out there. After a pretty busy five o'clock hour, we saw a couple of wrecks there earlier west of downtown. That's been cleared up. And then we had the one on I-10 at UTSA Boulevard. That one has been cleared up. So just kind of keep that in mind. The biggest thing that we're looking at right now is just a stalled vehicle here at US 90 eastbound at Couples Road. Again, this has been kind of a little trouble spot for us so far throughout the morning, but uh, nothing major as we could see as we get a closer look with our maps. You see traffic flowing pretty good in the eastbound and westbound lanes there at Couples Road, but again, a stall. So if you see that emergency vehicle, those emergency lights, just kind of keep that in mind as you make your way out there. And we take a look at the wider map and you can see a lot of green on our screen. So that is good there. So um, this is a bit of a treat so far on Halloween for our drivers as they head out during the six o'clock hour and things, of course, might pick up just a little bit more throughout the morning. And this is something that we will continue to follow. Guys, back to you. Thank you, RJ. There is an active silver alert you may see on your way to work this morning. The search is on for 92 year old James Chambers. He was last seen yesterday in Pasadena. That's in the Houston area. He was in a 2014 silver Kia Optima with a Texas license plate DXF 9573. If you know where he might be, you're asked to call Pasadena police at 713-477-1221. The Uvalde community continues to rally together for the 21 people who were killed at Robb Elementary. In the first Remember Their Names Festival, hundreds came to the Uvalde County Fairplex to remember the lives lost on May 24th and to raise money for Uvalde High School seniors. Now, there were different events to honor each victim, including a barbecue competition for slain teacher Edema Garcia and her husband Joe, who died just days after the massacre. Edema's siblings, Velma and Marcus, say although there's still a great deal of sadness, they know this is the best way they can honor their sister and brother-in-law. The outcome that we have, it's a blessing. We feel the love and hopefully the healing process will begin. And then we'll just continue this yearly and remember of their names. It means for scholarships. It's just a beautiful way to honor Joe and Irma. They would love it. High school seniors will be writing letters to apply for the scholarships over the next few weeks for families to select the recipient of their loved one's scholarship. Top of your morning headlines, over 150 people died in a Halloween tragedy over the weekend, crushed inside a massive crowd during celebrations in Seoul, South Korea. And now we're learning about the two young Americans who are among the victims. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has the details. Two Americans are among the dead in South Korea from what's being called the deadliest crowd crush in decades. The family of Annie Gieske, a nursing student at the University of Kentucky, says she died in the chaos. And Stephen Blessy, a 20 year old from Georgia, was studying international business abroad. His father tells the New York Times when the U.S. Embassy called to say his son had died, it was like it stabbed like a hundred million times simultaneously. <laughs> The tragedy unfolding at a Halloween celebration Saturday night in Seoul. Officials estimate more than 100,000 people packed the streets for the city's first post-COVID restrictions Halloween party when a massive sea of people jammed into a narrow alley. The revelers were coming by the thousands from each side, down below here and from both sides up above. And this alley is just 14 feet wide. There was nowhere for anyone to go. As the crowd surged forward, witnesses describe a hell-like chaos. People in costumes crushed, suffocating, and falling like dominoes as party music blared in the background. And then the emergency services arrived, and they were just pulling bodies out and just dumping them on the street. Rows of rescuers performed CPR on victims. American Janelle's story was able to escape the crowd. I just saw in front of me this mass of people running and pushing and screaming and, and like panicking. Authorities say 200 officers were on hand for the event, about one officer for every 500 people in attendance. South Korea's interior minister acknowledges officials did not anticipate such a large crowd and said a considerable amount of police officers had been sent elsewhere to another part of the city where unrelated protests were planned. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. In today's Tech Bytes, a new revenue stream for Twitter. Reports say new owner Elon Musk wants to charge users to maintain their verified status. The reported cost will be $20 per month for Twitter Blue. Musk tweeted Sunday the verification process is being revamped. 
Apple's upcoming MacBook Pro might not arrive until next year. The 14 and 16 inch laptops were expected to be released at the end of this year. But Bloom Bloomberg now says it may be pushed back to early March to coincide with the launch of the company's next iOS update. Google is out with Great Ghoul Duel 2, a sequel to its <laughs> popular multiplayer Halloween game from 2018. Like the original two teams of four ghosts, collect as many as wandering spirits flames as possible. The new version includes several upgrades and must be played by the end of the day. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. All right, so the Cowboys were back in action yesterday in week eight of the NFL regular season, welcoming the Chicago Bears to town. Dallas got to work early in this one, shutting out the Bears in the first quarter, 14 to nothing. Final from Arlington, or rather Dallas got to work early in this one, shutting out the Bears in the first quarter, 14-0. Chicago started to come alive in the second. Cowboys, Cowboys pulled away to win it in dominating fashion. The final from Arlington, Cowboys win it 49-29. Dallas improves to 6-2 and two as they hit their break. Their next matchup will be November 13th in Green Bay against the struggling Packers. Another team really struggling, the Houston Texans. They played host to their division rival Tennessee Titans yesterday. Houston just could not get an offensive rhythm going until it was too late in the game. And defensively, they could not stop the Titans. Derrick Henry ran up and down the field all afternoon. The Titans get the road win in Houston. Final from NRG, Tennessee 17, Houston 10. Texans fall to 1, 5, and 1 on the season and remain in last place in the AFC South. It's not all doom and gloom in Houston. The baseball team tied at one game apiece with the Phillies in this year's World Series, and the Strohs have some momentum as the series shifts to Philly tonight. Game three, the best of seven, is set for tonight around 7 p.m. If you've missed it, don't look now. Our young Spurs enjoying a strong start to the season, and other teams are noticing the silver and black got the win at home last night against Minnesota. They're currently sitting at 5-2 on the season. Spurs will stay home to take on Toronto on Wednesday. Then Friday, the Clippers come to town. On Saturday, the team travels to Denver, who uh, gave the LA Lakers their first win last night. Denver wow. loses to the LA Lakers. Yeah, it's an interesting season all around. For LA, for yes. sure, yeah. And we are very happy about the Spurs. Of course, five <laughs> and two is great. Yes, we're proud of you. Time now, 610 and 54 degrees for now. And still come now that Tom Brady and Giselle Bundchen have confirmed they are divorcing, how the former power couple will divide their financial empire. That's just ahead in your GMA First Look. Plus a weekend of fun Halloween festivities around town. After the break, a look at some of the spooky fun. And taking a look outside with a live pan. It's slightly more humid this morning, but you still may want to grab a jacket. It's 54 degrees. We'll be right back. Welcome back, 614. Halloween is here and celebrations have been happening all weekend. One of those was a big Halloween party at the San Antonio Shrine Auditorium Pavilion. For many, this was their first time attending since the pandemic. The party featured a lot of music, food, pumpkin carving, and of course, trick-or-treating. Organizers say the response from those in attendance has been phenomenal. There were two haunted house options, fun or scary. Let's take a look at this year's pumpkin carving contest at Northwest Baptist Hospital. 13 pumpkins were entered into this tough competition from scary pumpkins with spiders to Barbie gets an MRI to oh my goodness. spaghetti vomit. <laughs> That's just to name a few. How awesome are those? Oh my gosh, great job. And right now on our website, we want you we want to see your pets in their Halloween costumes. No, 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 no back up. V vampire like. Oh, <laughs> you, you got this. We want. <laughs> I can't do it. There you go, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> like Count Dracula. So go ahead and submit them to KSET.com and look for the story under the Halloween section. You Thank you, Mike. You still 45 minutes to nail this, okay? Uh, I, I don't think I can do it. Sure you can. I was, I, my first attempt was really bad. No, you just slow it down. We want. To see your pets. I want to bite your neck. Moving on. Six, whoa, Mike. Uh, what? 615. RJ. RJ is here. You, you can take it away. <laughs> I will do my best. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. For a while. Um, and hey, 
guys, like a uh, like a bad, uh, you know, like a Halloween movie villain here. We have this uh, incident here at I-10 at Days of Allah that has creeped back up and is causing some uh, issues here for our drivers. So again, this was a reported as a crash, but then checked with uh, Textout right now. It was then a disabled vehicle, but as you can see that there are still emergency vehicles in this area. Again, I-10 westbound at De Zavala Road, and the crash is actually being reported up the road a little bit at uh, I-10 at UTSA Boulevard. So just kind of keep this in mind as you make your way through this area. And so far, it looks like traffic's not being affected too much here, but again, this, uh, this incident seems like it's taking a little bit longer for crews to kind of clear out. As we take a look at our wider map, and you can see that uh, traffic building up a little bit in some of our common areas, but for the most part, things pretty clear as we make our way on this uh, Halloween Monday morning. Again, this is the biggest thing that we are following right now. This. Um, this reported crash, again, it's kind of gone back and forth from reported crash to disabled vehicle. I-10 westbound at De Zavala out on the northwest side. So just kind of uh, keep that in mind as you make your way out there. Speaking of that, Mike, how are things looking? Not too bad, Mark. Hi. <laughs> Hi, you're on camera. I didn't know we were doing we, this here. I didn't either, Hi. but Hi. it's good to see you. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Thank Happy you. Right. Let's, let's, hey, Mike. Yes. Go ahead and do your forecast there, Pumpkin. <laughs> I was just about to roll that school bus. So uh, we're going to be down to 53 degrees, mostly cloudy skies this morning. Grab a jacket, and it's almost at uh, kind of dampish cool. Humidity is up mm, enough to where you sort of sort of feel it with these temperatures. And then 78 for a high temperature later on this afternoon. A couple of sprinkles are possible. The better shot any sort of rain is going to be then later on this evening. Take a look at this picture. I love this one. Absolutely adorable. This is Valentina and her first Halloween. And without reading the caption, what is she? What character is she? I can't see. Oh, okay. I can't, I can't see it. Oh, you can't see? Oh, I'll move closer. Because she's... Um, Got the, the black and white right there. Oh, so. yeah. And the, yeah. there's the, the, the famous red dress. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. The Disney version. Yeah. Just uh, make sure you scan that QR code and send in some of your uh, great pet pics or other pictures. And we've got some clouds hanging around here this morning. Mid-40s Hill Country, 53 Port SA, 57 at Stinson. And uh, we are going to see some sunshine thrown in with the clouds, especially later on this morning and then early afternoon. 69 at 11 o'clock, 72 at noon. High temperature again up to uh, 78. So just about a normal high temperature, just about a normal low temperature. Low or mid 50s, upper 70s, uh, the normals for this time of year. Now, again, we have a little bit of sunshine maybe uh, thrown on in with some of these clouds. And then by late this afternoon, and dinner time, just one or two sprinkles. And, you know, it's not necessarily going to be raining exactly in those spots, but this is just kind of an indication we got more moisture getting pumped on in here. So, a couple sprinkles, a little bit of mist. Take an umbrella just to be on the, uh, the safe side. And we'll have a few more as we go into the evening hours for the early trick or treaters. Probably a lesser chance for uh, any of these sprinkles, and then a slightly better shot by later on this evening. But again, they're going to be very scattered about but an umbrella is a good idea. Then rain is going to start to develop more overnight into tomorrow morning. Looks like it's going to be kind of a damp commute tomorrow and especially throughout the first portion of the day. Humidity is going to start to come back in here next week and then it'll finally drop off by Saturday as the next front moves on through here. Here's what's going on. We've got a little bit of some waves kind of moving on through here, giving us this chance for some rain. Another big trough is developing out there to the west. Ahead of that, that's going to pull in all the moisture around here. It's going to be on the mild side. It's going to be somewhat humid the rest of the week. Then we have those rain chances coming in here late Thursday, Friday as that low approaches. And then especially Friday night into early Saturday morning. Then that's going to pull that front on through by uh, about midday on Saturday. And that's going to clear us on out. Not a huge blast of cold air, but just more seasonable temperatures and some cooler mornings then behind that. 72 at noon, partly sunny skies. High temperature is going to make it up to 78 today with mostly cloudy skies, couple little sprinkles around dinner time, maybe into the early evening hours. Then we go into tomorrow and we're going to have a better chance of rain overnight into tomorrow morning and We'll have cooler temperatures tomorrow, then mild as we go into Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Better chance of rain late Friday overnight, early Saturday morning. And then we're going to clear out and it looks very nice for Sunday. And we get the extra hour on Sunday. Hallelujah. Yay. Nice little break there. Set your clocks back an hour before you go to bed Saturday. We'll do that and enjoy that extra hour.
God's time, as my mom said. <laughs> 620, 54 degrees. And coming up later this morning on GMA, the Black Panther and stars are live in Times Square to talk about the upcoming Wakanda Forever. Plus, get the sugar rush started early with the epic Halloween candy cook-off. That's next on GMA, beginning at 7. Before we hit a break, here's some Halloween pictures from our KSAT crew. We'll be right back. Trilogy for COPD. Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting on by, you know how I feel. You don't have to take COPD <laughs> sitting down. It's a new dawn, it's a new day. It's time to make a stand. And I'm feeling good. Start a new day with Trilogy. No one's daily COPD medicine has the power to treat COPD in as many ways as Trilogy. With three medicines in one inhaler, Trilogy makes breathing easier for a full 24 hours, improves lung function, and helps prevent future flare-ups. Trilogy won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking it. Do not take Trilogy more than prescribed. Trilogy may increase your risk of thrush, pneumonia, and osteoporosis. Call your doctor if worsened breathing, chest pain, mouth or tongue swelling, problems urinating, vision changes or eye pain occur. Take a stand and start a new day with Trilogy. Ask your doctor about Once Daily Trilogy and save at Trilogy.com. In this morning's GMA First Look, new details on Tom Brady and Giselle Bunchen's divorce. They have very much not had the same goal when it comes to their relationship as a couple, but they do have the same goals when it comes to their children. And that means, you know, creating a safe environment for them to really feel like they have everything that they need and what they care about most and are most focused on is, you know, sharing custody of the kids and making the kids feel safe and supported. Now, as they move forward for their family, questions about how the former power couple will divide their combined financial empire. Fortune estimating it's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. But I assume since they have so much money, they'll each be leaving this marriage uh, very comfortably and um, hopefully without a lot of problems. And we'll tell you what's next for the high wattage couple coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. And Muertos Fest may be over, but you can still check it out on our primetime special. So you can rewatch it online right now. It aired last night. You'll get to see some of the musical acts and altars created to honor loved ones lost. Just head over to our website at kset.com to relive it all. You were down there this weekend. Mm -hmm. I heard it was spectacular. Yes, it was so much fun. I, I got a chance to MC the fashion show, mm -hmm. which was really cool to see all of the pretty much works of art out there. You said it was obvious people either were doing Dia de los Muertos, so they were headed to Elton John. <laughs> or the Elton John, yes. A lot of people were dressed up for the Elton John concert as well. It was vibrant downtown this weekend. 626, 54 degrees. Quick look at the roads with Transguide. Looking over there at I-10 at De Zavala. Things are moving this Halloween morning, but we're going to get another update from our RJ Markets very soon. We're learning more details about the alleged suspect who attacked House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's husband. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. Heightened security concerns for lawmakers coming up. Outside with live cam, waiting for the sun to come up on Halloween. Mike has your forecast. We want to be, everybody to be extra careful this evening. It is a school night, so you'll be rushing home to trick or treat and then rushing home to get to bed. So please, everybody, be extra safe out there on the roads, highways, byways, side streets and all. Yes, definitely. Happy Halloween. Good morning. There you go. Oh, I love that. Thank you for this Halloween graphic. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah, complete with pumpkins and everything. Very appropriate for today. We're hoping that the weather will be appropriate also for trick-or-treating. Um, not too cold or not too hot, I should say. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to be human in your in your Halloween costume. Now, the question is, though, do we see a couple of sprinkles? There will be a couple of them out there here and there. Very, very few and far between. I really wouldn't worry about it too much, but just take an umbrella to be on the safe side. It's going to be very, very light. The early trick-or-treaters, the, the little ones, I think you're safer, but then later on, the chance for those sprinkles do go up just a slightly. So it's not going to be, like I said, a big deal. 55 right now, dew points at 49. So we're still well below 
60. So when you walk inside, it's not like you sweat or anything like that. But since we've got a fair amount of humidity compared to this temperature, there's almost that kind of dampish chill out there this morning. So definitely grab a jacket. 45 Bernie stage, mid 40s Hill Country, 53 New Braunfels, 52 over in Hondo. And we do have low amounts of uh, mold and juniper. The update account is going to come out in about an hour or so. 72 at noon, 78 for high temperature. Some sunshine mixed in, but we're leaning toward the cloudier side throughout most of the day. By 9 o'clock, we'll have a few showers around here. But as far as trick-or-treating itself right around dinner time, again, there could be a sprinkle out there. I really wouldn't concern yourself too much with it. Maybe one or two more by, say, around uh, 7 o'clock. Again, just take an umbrella just to be on the on the safe side. We do have some better rain chances overnight tomorrow morning and then again toward the latter part of the week. We'll talk about that and take a look ahead to funny to say the first weekend of November already coming up. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. This is Mark has his favorite son. RJ is here. <laughs> I like that. And uh, no tricks, uh, just a little bit of treats here out on the roads on this Halloween morning. And uh, this was the accident that we were following earlier, I-10 at De Zavala. And look, it's kind of been going back and forth here, but it looks like as things have been cleared up. My, our eyes are not lying to us here. Uh, I-10 De Zavala, things looking like pretty smooth there as they have cleared up. There was a crash reported earlier. Our maps are still showing this. But again, we just saw our trans guys shot there in that area. So things uh, moving along smoothly there. Now we do have another crash to tell you about here. This one uh, kind of where the south side and southwest side sort of meet there. Uh, I-10, I-35 southbound, excuse me, at Yarrow Boulevard. So one thing here, this is off on the service road. And uh, I was looking through trans guide a little bit earlier. Didn't really see any major backup in this area, but something to kind of keep in mind as you make your way out there. Again, a crash reported there on the service on the service street there for uh, I-35 southbound at Yarrow Boulevard. So just uh, keep that in mind if you're headed out. So I'm going to go ahead and go switch over to our rotating shots, show you a little bit more of the city. Uh, 90 at Couples, we had a stalled vehicle out there earlier. That's been cleared up and a 281 at Hildebrand. Things looking pretty smooth out there as you make your way out on this Monday Halloween. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, RJ. San Antonio police say suspects are still on the run this morning following a shooting that led to a multi-car crash on the city's northeast side with two victims rushed to the hospital. This happened on Walsham and Parkcrest just outside of Walmart on Sunday. Police say a driver in a silver vehicle chased people in a stolen white Kia on Walsham Road and someone fired several rounds, striking two teens inside the white car. Now, during the incident, the driver in the white Kia slammed into two innocent bystanders inside their vehicle. We spoke to one of the victims and he tells us the entire incident happened within minutes. He hit me broadside and spun my car around. And when he spun my car around, the other car clicked me. Now, two of the shooting victims were rushed to University Hospital. One teen was shot in the chest. At last check, he was in critical condition. The other teen was shot in the shoulder. Detectives are working to get video footage from nearby businesses to identify the suspects and victim that got away. They say the shooter in the silver vehicle is still on the run. In India, military team searching for people missing after a century old pedestrian bridge collapsed into a river, killing at least 132 people. More than 100 fell into the river when the bridge collapsed. Live video report showed hundreds of others clinging to the broken structure and trying to make their way to safety. At least 177 survivors were pulled from the river and teams from the Indian Army, Navy and Air Force were still searching for others. The bridge had just reopened after repairs. Officials said the bridge gave way because it was overloaded with tourists. The disaster was one of the worst accidents in India in the past decade. Back here in the States, authorities are expected to file charges today against the person accused of breaking into House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's home and attacking her husband. The incident is shedding light on growing violent threats against members of Congress with the midterm elections now just eight days away. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has the latest from Washington. Heightened fears over lawmakers' safety as new details emerge about the alleged suspect who attacked House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's husband. Law enforcement sources tell ABC News 42-year-old David DePap had zip ties and duct tape in his bags early Friday when he broke into the Pelosi home. Sources say DePap shouted, where's Nancy? Another parallel to the January 6th Capitol attack. Where are you, Nancy? Authorities say Paul Pelosi called 911 when DePap broke in, leaving the line open. 
RP stated that there's a male in the home and that he's going to wait for his wife. RP stated that he doesn't know who the male is. Police arrived within two minutes. When they ordered DePap to drop his weapon, a hammer, that's when he allegedly struck Pelosi at least twice, fracturing his skull. This was not a random act. Authorities are now combing through the suspect's social media pages. Some allegedly show multiple false conspiracy theories about the 2020 election. What happened to uh, Paul Pelosi is despicable. It's unacceptable. The attack highlighting the growing hostility toward members of Congress, with threats at an all-time high more than doubling since 2017. In an increasingly toxic political climate, a joint FBI Homeland Security bulletin sent to police nationwide now warns of a heightened threat by lone wolves ahead of the midterm elections. A politics where, where some in office or who aspire to office work to stir up division, to, to make folks as angry and as afraid of one another for their own advantage. House Speaker Pelosi says her family is heartbroken and traumatized by the life-threatening attack. The San Francisco DA is expected to file charges against the alleged suspect today, with a court hearing expected tomorrow. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. In your morning consumer headlines, keeping warm this winter may not cost quite as much as some had feared. Natural gas prices are now more than 40 percent lower than the highs posted in late August. That's due in part to a relatively warm autumn so far and record domestic production. But analysts warn a cold snap could turn prices around. The Fed this week is expected to raise interest rates again in hopes of slowing down inflation. But experts tell the Wall Street Journal that American households are still sitting on nearly $2 trillion in savings accumulated through the pandemic. And all that buying power could keep prices high. And we're learning more about what several companies are paying their employees. New York City employers are starting to comply with a new law taking effect this week that requires most job listings to include a pay range. The aim is to help close gender pay gaps. Looking ahead, lucky lottery players could be in for a very big treat this Halloween night. With no winner Saturday night, the Powerball jackpot stands at a staggering $1 billion. It's only the second time in Powerball's 30-year history the jackpot has hit a billion bucks. This is expected to be the second largest jackpot in Powerball history. On Saturday, seven tickets match five numbers, but not the Powerball. The biggest of all time was one point. $5.8 billion back in January of 2016. Got to remember to get those tickets. Wow. I imagine it's going to be busy today. Very busy yes. lines there wherever you get your lottery tickets. Right now, 638 to 54 degrees. And just ahead on GMSA, keeping your family safe this Halloween, what you need to remember before heading out to enjoy all the spooky fun. 642, we have some late breaking news. We've got a crew down on the south side covering a shooting incident. Katrina Weber is live along Watson Road and joins us now with the latest. Katrina, good morning. What is the latest? Good morning. Well, we just talked to police and they tell us that this is believed to be a road rage incident. A person who was shot by someone else while driving down the road. Now we're on Watson Road, which is off of Highway 16. We're only a stone's throw away from the Toyota plant, if you're familiar with that area. But the car that was involved, the victim's car, is still over there on the side of the road in front of that police car. Police say a 47-year-old man was shot in his leg, apparently during a road rage incident. The shooter, they say, was in a white pickup, and that is the vehicle that they are still looking for at this point. The shooter took off. The man who was shot was taken to a hospital. Police say his wound was not life-threatening. But you can see that they are still over there uh, looking. It looks like they're shining the flashlight in that area, possibly looking for some, uh, some evidence. They believe this is where the incident happened, and then the victim stopped right there on the side of the road. Uh, again, non-life-threatening injuries for him. They are still looking, actively searching for that suspect, the shooter, uh, apparently in a white pickup. That's all the information they have at this point. Reporting live on the South Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. 
Blood donations are crucial for our community here around South Texas. Uh, South Texas Blood and Tissue Center serves 48 counties across our region. We spoke with Roger Ruiz from the organization, and he talked about how blood donations are so important for so many different people, especially pediatric cancer patients. And blood helps them boost their cell count back up so they continue um, to not have to wait for treatment. And so this helps them greatly. 30% um, of our blood goes to these patients, and that's why it's so important that you continue to donate, donate blood, donate platelets. We need it. We need both. Roger also said that the ideal supply of blood donations is at a six day supply. We are not there yet. And he is also reminding people that those blood donations, they go down during the holidays. So encouraging anyone who can step up and help out to do just that. If you're interested in helping out, we have all that information. Just head to KSAT.com. If you want to watch the entire interview with Roger, we also have that on KSAT.com. We have leading essay every Sunday, 8 a.m. So guys, we'll see you next Sunday. Back to you. Well, you've heard it all morning. Halloween is finally here. And since Halloween falls on a Monday this year, drivers, pedestrians and homeowners need to stay alert. So AAA says homeowners should avoid using lit candles or open flames as decorations because of a fire hazard. Instead, use LED lights and pick up everything in the yard so nobody trips over anything. And if you're out driving around, make sure you put that phone down and watch out for the kiddos on the street since excited trick-or-treaters might not look both ways for the cars. Also, make sure your trick-or-treaters stay together or with someone you trust. AAA recommends parents stay with young trick-or-treaters at least till they're 12 years old. They also recommend highly visible costumes using reflective tape so drivers can see you. And if you're going to a party tonight, make plans to get home safely. That includes a designated driver, cab, or rideshare service if you have been drinking. And I've been seeing some problems on I-35 at New Braunfels. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and check in with RJ Marcus. Yeah, guys, things definitely starting to pick up on this Monday morning as people make their way out to either work or school. We have uh, this incident right here at I-35 at New Braunfels, a little bit on the east side. So uh, right now this is just reported as a disabled vehicle, but I've been looking at this over the past couple of minutes. You can see there are now multiple uh, emergency vehicles there. It looks like there's a couple of uh, San Antonio police officers that have also responded to this scene. So just kind of uh, keep this in mind as you make your way out. Again, this is being reported right now as a disabled vehicle vehicle I-35 at New Braunfels as we take a look at uh, our wide map here and again a couple of different things that we're talking about this crash right there on uh, Yarrow Boulevard as we get a little bit closer yeah I-35 southbound at Yarrow Boulevard this was on the service road so so far no appears it does not appear to be causing too much of a major backup in that area just something you definitely want to keep in mind if you are in that uh, southwest side south side general area and again this was the Thing that we were talking about earlier. This is I-35 southbound at New Braunfels Avenue and uh, traffic still moving pretty smooth in this area. Again, reported as a disabled vehicle as we go back out to Transguide. Uh, I-35 southbound there at New, at New Braunfels. So things looking pretty, pretty, a little bit hairy there in that area as I kind of make my way back to our desk. And uh, there was also another incident, guys, 35 at Loop 60 and 4 that I'm starting to follow as we make our way through on this Monday morning. Things definitely starting to pick up out there. Happy Halloween, team. Happy yeah. Halloween. Yeah, good to have you guys with us this morning. Michael, yep. how's it looking? It's looking, uh, well, pretty scary if you look at this picture coming uh -oh. up. Uh-oh, let's yeah. see it. Oh, it's not scary. Oh. <laughs> it's cute. It's a great shot. <laughs> Lula May. Lula May. Oh. <laughs> that's adorable. Oh, that's fantastic. I wonder how long that sheet stays on when Lula May starts running around there. Anyway, thank you very much for the KSAT Connect picture. Make sure you scan that QR code and uh, it makes it easy to download some of those KSAT Connect shots. All right, we're not seeing any glow yet of the uh, sunrise. Got a lot of clouds out there. I doubt if we see anything. Well, maybe a little bit of sunshine trying to peek on through there, a little bit of the glow, but we got a lot of uh, high clouds. 46 Comfort, 45 Bernie Stage, 52 at Randolph. And 55 out there at the airport right now. We we'll may drop down another couple of notches here and there. Pretty close to normals, normal being mid 50s right now. A lot of clouds, some sunshine thrown in. I think especially late morning, early afternoon, we'll see just kind of a mixture, nice even mixture of sunshine and clouds. 72 at noon, we'll top off at 78. Clouds are going to thicken back up, um, and then we'll have a chance for a couple of sprinkles. Not a big chance for rain, just a sprinkle or two. If you're going to be out walking around the neighborhood trick or treating with the kids, just grab an umbrella just to be on the, the safe side. Here's computer model and this is the one that's been uh, doing a pretty good job. I think showing 
A couple little sprinkles. I mean, even by 630, this doesn't have anything. Maybe a couple of them out there by uh, Lakey in Real County and a few more in portions of the hill country. That's the the detectable rain. So that doesn't mean there won't be anything out ahead of it. We will have more moisture coming on in here. So again, maybe some mist or a couple light little sprinkles here, and that'll be the situation in through tonight. Then as we go into the mid late evening hours, more rain is going to try and develop around here and then especially going Going into uh, tomorrow morning, we will have a few showers around, so it does look like it's going to be a damp commute tomorrow, and then that will start to taper off somewhat. All right, quick check of the tropics. We do have tropical depression number 15 down here in the Caribbean. It does look like it will become a tropical storm later on this morning, but the latest models have this thing just going right into Central America and not affecting us at all. Quick uh, check on the upper level steering wind. So we've got this disturbance trying to slide on through here, and that's what's been giving us the chance for a couple of showers around. Then as we have go into the rest of the week, we get this big southwesterly flow with this trough developing out there. That's going to pull in warmer temperatures, so we will be on the above normal side, more humid as we go into the mid and latter portions of the week, and then that's going to be digging and coming in our direction, and as it approaches by Thursday and Friday, that's going to enhance our rain chances, especially going into Friday night and early Saturday, but once that moves on past here, we are going to get a front to move on through, not an Arctic front, but just kind of another Pacific front, get rid of the humidity, clear things out. Saturday late in the day and Sunday look pretty good. 72 degrees at noon today, partly sunny skies, high temperature up to 78, mostly cloudy skies with a couple of sprinkles later on late afternoon dinner time, just very few and far between. Again, if you're heading out trick or treat and just take an umbrella to be on the uh, the safe side and then tomorrow it's going to stay cool 72 and we'll have some morning rain then it's going to be milder midweek rain chances perhaps late Thursday but better Friday, Friday night, early Saturday. Then we'll start to uh, clear out on Saturday and it looks great for Sunday. Set your clocks back, yay. Hallelujah, Mike Osterhage, hallelujah. Yes, what a nice break after a busy week, right? Yep. We'll take it. And thank you very much. And by the way, you're seeing some whiskers already. Mm -hmm. We've got a jump start on No Shave November, which starts tomorrow. More to come, 651. 54 degrees. And tomorrow on GMSA, you probably are seeing a lot of butterflies flying around. We're going to show you how to identify some of the ones you may be seeing. Outside with live cam on your Halloween. Please be safe out there tonight. And before we head to break, here are some more Halloween pictures from our KSET crew. That's me. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. We have got a little bit of a mess going on here on the northeast side. This is I-35 at Loop 1604. So this is just a little bit south of 1604 and you can see that there's uh, already traffic building up there. They just talked to a trans guide right now and they say that there is a crash in that area. This is something that we will continue to follow. As we take a look at our maps, you can see it's already causing some significant uh, backup there kind of on the northbound lane. So this is something that we will continue to follow throughout the morning. Again, developing story here, I-35 at 1604. You can see a lot of emergency vehicles in that area. Traffic is definitely backed up right there. Mike, how are things looking outside? Well, kind of cloudy. There there's a little bit of the glow, as you can see, with uh, some of those holes in the clouds. We have temperatures that are in the mid 50s, mid 40s in the hill country, and we'll make it up to the upper 70s later on today. Plenty of clouds today, couple of sprinkly showers. So trick or treat forecast. You have been just been saying take an umbrella just to be on the safe side because there will be maybe some mist, a couple of light little sprinkles here and there, and that's going to be the case into the evening hours. Then better rain chances overnight, and uh, tomorrow morning does look like it's going to be uh, pretty much on the the wet side tomorrow morning and we will then uh, get kind of mild toward the middle part of the week. So again, take an umbrella, play it safe tonight. Be That's extra good. safe, please. Have fun. Yes, have lots of fun trick-or-treating out there and don't forget we'll see you back here at 9 o'clock.